Welcome back to Paranormal Resident. This video is based on facts and not opinion. This is an historic account of the Royal Irish Constabulary, the RIC. The police force was first established in 1836 under the authority of the British administration in Ireland based in Dublin Castle and was responsible for policing outside of Dublin. Unlike other police forces elsewhere in the UK at the time, this force was armed and it was used to enforce laws and put down civil unrest. It was as a result of an uprising in 1867 which the force successfully suppressed that they were rewarded by Queen Victoria and granted the new title of the Royal Irish Constabulary, a name they kept throughout its existence. During the famine years, the RIC were tasked with escorting and guarding food shipments to protect them from theft and disruption from a starving population, and were also present at evictions of tenants who couldn't pay rent to landlords because of crop failure. But it is toward the end of its existence that the RIC became notorious for acts of cruelty and violence against the Irish population during the War of Irish Independence. Since the failed uprising in Easter 1916 and the British response to it, numbers in the RIC began to fall, with large numbers of its men resigning in opposition to the policies being introduced following the event. With numbers falling and more events unfolding, British authorities lost confidence in the RIC to handle the situation in Ireland and to boost numbers ran a recruitment campaign in mainland Britain. During 1919, this led to a new force being introduced to Ireland to increase numbers in the depleted ranks of the RIC. The new force came to be known as the Black and Tans. The new recruits were sworn in as constables and was made up mainly of former soldiers that had served in World War I. The name Black and Tans comes from the uniforms that they wore. There was a shortage of ordinary police uniforms, so they wore a mix of army khaki and dark green, and the name stuck. In July 1920, extra men were added to back up the RIC, known as the Auxiliary Division, made up of former army officers, but they were never given police training or bound by military discipline and conduct. Killings and brutality were recorded from across the country during this time, carried out by the RIC, the Black and Tans, and Auxiliary Forces. Tomás McCurtain was the elected Lord Mayor of Cork and on the 20th of March 1920, on his 36th birthday, he was dragged from his home and shot dead in front of his wife and son by a group of men with blackened faces. These men were later found out to be members of the RIC, and the inquest into his death recorded a verdict of willful murder by members of the RIC and the British Prime Minister. On the night of November 14th, 1920, a Catholic priest was taken from his home in Galway and questioned as he was deemed to be a Republican sympathiser. His body was found a week later in an unmarked grave. He had been shot in the head. On Sunday, the 21st of November 1920, in response to the killing of 12 British officers that morning, auxiliaries and members of the RIC entered Crow Park and opened fire on a crowd of spectators watching a football match between Dublin and Tipperary. Twelve civilians were killed, including women, children and one of the football players. The day became known as Bloody Sunday. The day concluded with the auxiliaries killing three prisoners they had in custody in Dublin Castle. On the 28th of November 1920, convoy carrying members of the RIC auxiliaries were ambushed near Macroom in County Cork. In response to the ambush and the loss of their men on the 11th of December, Cork City was set alight. The city was looted and burnt, destroying City Hall, Carnegie Library and most of Patrick Street was lost to fires, with many businesses and homes being burnt to the ground. Firefighters in the city later testified that British forces stopped their attempts to put out the fires, cutting their hoses and shooting at them. The burning of Cork was one of the most significant actions carried out by the auxiliary forces of the RIC. The long-lasting legacy of the RIC certainly left its mark on the early governments of the newly founded Irish state. They decided that never again would the population be subject to the brutality inflicted upon them by their police force and later the Black and Tans. 
In February 1922, the new government founded a new police service on Garda Síochána. The Guardians of the Peace, its first commissioner, famously stated, the Garda Síochána will succeed not by force of arms or numbers, but on their moral authority as servants of the people. This new police force was not a continuation of the RIC and would be founded on a totally different concept to that of the organisation it was set up to replace. The ideas of consent rather than brute force and being servants, not rulers of the people. In August 1922, the RIC was formally disbanded, though its authority and numbers had long since gone. To this day, Ireland's police service remains a largely unarmed force, whose authority to do their job comes from the consent of the people, a tradition formed in the early days of a young state. Eager not to see the horrors of the past repeated and a policy that had come about as a result of the actions of the RIC, especially during the years of the fight for Irish independence. You have been watching Paranormal Resident. If you could, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, all linked down below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.